So right behind me is a new laser from WeCreate. It is their first small format and portable laser, but that's not it. There it is. This small laser features a dual laser Galvo setup with a 10 watt diode laser and a three watt IR laser. So one watt more than a lot of the other two IR lasers out there. And that one watt does make a difference, especially when it comes to engraving and putting darker marks on metal. The base of the machine is this machined aluminum with all these pre-drilled holes. So you can use these included corner brackets to hold your materials square to the laser and makes it really easy for repeatable projects, especially if you're starting to do a small batch production on this machine, which it is more than capable of doing. And this bottom plate is removable, so you can engrave through that area underneath. So you can raise this up. I've actually made a custom platform where you could put something a lot larger underneath and laser through this area right there and do your engraving. The back of the machine gives an indication of some of its expandability. One, you have an auxiliary port, and this, as of right now, is used for their conveyor system, which I'll be showing later in the video, and also for a rotary. And they have a version of the Rotary Pro, although it's not exactly the same, but that will plug in and use a rotary with this machine as well. Controls are fairly simple. You could do a manual focus and defocus with this knob here but there is also an autofocus setting where you let the machine kind of decide where the optimal focus is. I usually use the manual, but the autofocus is there if you want to use that option instead. And to round out the rest of the back of the machine, there is a port for exhaust because you still do have to evacuate all those fumes from the engraving and the little bit of cutting you're probably gonna do with this machine. You have a USB connection and your power. And then you have the power button on the kind of a, the back left quarter of the machine right there, just simply switching on and off. Now, what's interesting about this machine compared to some similar ones that I've seen and used is the absence of an emergency stop button. There isn't one, which means that if you have an issue, one, the machine should trigger an air because there are sensors inside of I've actually had it trigger a flame air at one point when I was cutting something out uh, out of wood, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, and the machine will automatically stop, which is great. It does have that good safety feature, but if you need to turn off the machine really quickly for any reason, you have to reach around, kind of search for the power button and yank that, or, or shut the power off at the power supply. And those are really your only options. So the fact that it doesn't have an emergency stop button, at least that I'm aware of, there's nothing visibly there, um, is a little bit different. But other than that, I like the construction. I like the shape. It is not just a simple box, which they easily could have done. I kind of like the fact they did something a little bit different and provided a little bit more work area on the inside, although the actual cutting area and engraving area is still pretty much limited to, to that right there, at least without the conveyor expansion. But if you're doing a lot of repeatable projects that are small scale, this ends up being uh, a decent size for the most part. So a couple notes about the machine. WeCreate did send this out to me for review and I've had the Lumos for about a week. And I've spent that time running as many different tests as I can just to kind of figure out what the capabilities are of the machine. I've reviewed a lot of different lasers on this channel and I've re reviewed a couple that are similar to the WeCreate, especially in terms of the size and the metal engraving capabilities. So I had an idea of what the capability of the machine should be, but I wanted to see where it was different, especially because it has a three watt IR laser when most of the machines in this category either have a two watt or a 1.5 watt. And that one extra watt, which may not sound like a lot compared to when you're looking at diode lasers, that one watt makes a difference. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different projects that I've ran and different tests that I've done and talk about those results and what you could possibly expect as well. So one of the first things I really wanted to do was metal. I've done a lot of different wood engraving and metal is the one that is still um, a little bit more unique to a lot of people. And I have this metal bottle opener and I ran a test array. Now that test array came out great. 
Um, one thing, at least as of recording this video, the Make It software does not have a whole lot of options for the Lumos. I think the material library is a little bit small and I don't think it's been optimized for this laser yet. There might have been a newer version to make it released, but I have not gotten a hold of it yet. So I had to go off of my previous knowledge of settings and see what I was able to do. So take a look at this. So the Lumos has a capability of getting a really dark engrave on metal. Now that really dark mark is fairly slow, relatively slow um, at 100%, but the capability is there. And when you're doing metal engraving, it tends to be on smaller type items anyways, and you really can't go that large on this machine to begin with. So the time's gonna be somewhat relative to your size and what it is that you need out of the engraving. But it has the capability of doing pretty dark. Now, if you want a lighter engraving that still marks pretty well, you have those options as well. And you can even go a little bit faster to get those results. But it kind of depends on what you are looking for. Now, if I could focus a little bit better here, hopefully you can see, but there's a little bit of a color variation between basically half power, which almost looks a little bit brownish, and the 100% there. So depending on what it is that you want in your engraving, you have some options there and you get a really readable mark on this. Now, something else I really wanted to try was doing color engraving since I saw that this laser was able to do it. And I was able to get a pretty interesting variation of colors. The one issue with this, at least with the version that I'm using for the Make It software, is there's no presets to get repeatability of these colors. And I got these simply by changing the focus of the laser. So by defocusing either closer than it should have been or further away, I was able to get this range of colors. Now I did see a version of the Make It software, which I don't have and I'm not sure how the person had it, but was able to enter in some codes to get repeatability on the color. So if that is a, an official feature with Make It, uh, the software, then you could probably expand and do some really cool creative stuff with the color engraving. And just like I showed here, the times are going to vary depending on the result that you want, but it is possible with this machine, which is a cool little bonus. I also had a couple other tests aside from the metal, but so related to metal are these really popular coated aluminum business cards, or at least business card size. And I always like checking to see how close I could get to a photograph or a photograph quality with the laser. And I think I got pretty close with this one. So this is a black and white photo from the set of Star Wars. And even though it's not a very large picture, it's probably one of the best representations of a photo that I've gotten from any of my lasers. And that is pretty impressive. And that was done with the IR part of the Lumos. And it completed pretty quickly too. I don't remember the actual time it took to complete it, but quick enough that I would consider batch these out for a client. Now using that same photo, I also like seeing, you know, what it looks like to engrave on wood, especially a photo. Now I did this at a lower quality just to make sure that it went a little bit quicker in terms of time, but even at a 100 DPI, that looks pretty good on wood. Now there's different things you could do to treat the wood to get a little bit of a darker um, result without even upping the power, but you can also do a darker version too that will end up having almost like a relief type look because you could feel where the laser actually penetrated into the surface of the wood. Two simple examples of projects, but the Lumos did a great job with them. And not every laser does, even though it seems like it should be a simple project to pull off, but I'm very impressed so far with these results. Now, continuing a little bit with the kind of business card size, I've been toying around with the idea of doing a custom playing card deck set with the coated aluminum and wanted to see just how fine of a detail I can actually get on these. And I'll try to get a more up close look at this, but this came out really, really nice. So this is something I designed up myself and I couldn't believe how quickly it engraved. Now it is a simple lines, but it probably took about 20 seconds to engrave. And I want to show you one more thing with this. My first test, I made a mistake in my design and I ended up removing all of the metal off of the card. And then when it engraved the design, it turned white. So with the right settings, you can engrave on aluminum and have this kind of white 
kind of patterns show up, which is a cool option for your projects. Now there's one more thing I want to show for this segment in the video, and that is another wood engraving, but a little bit different style on purpose. So I used a higher power to penetrate the surface a little bit more, and you can actually feel the texture of the design. Now the other thing I wanted to do with this is I wanted to cut it out. Now a 10 watt laser that the Lumos has is not the most powerful diode laser. Now a 10 watt laser is really optimized for engraving. The lower the wattage, the finer the laser point when it hits the surface. So for engraving, it is fantastic. Now most 10 watt lasers can cut, but they usually don't cut that well. The Lumos also runs into that problem a little bit, but we create has something called beam focus technology where they're able to better align and focus the diodes in the laser. So you get a little bit better performance out of the laser. So it did cut pretty well. The only caveat is that the Lumos does not have air assist, which is usually used to keep flames down and keep your cutting area clean. But because Lumos does not have air assist, you simply just have to run the cut a little bit faster and maybe multiple times in order to get through and it'll work out just fine. First time I tried cutting this, I did end up with a little bit of a small flame, nothing burned, the laser shut down and the safety protocols are in place on the Lumos and it worked great. So I ran it again at a higher speed, more passes and it cut out just fine. So while it is capable of cutting, that's probably not gonna be the primary function that you use it for, depending on the projects that you do for your own personal hobby or small business. So that was just kind of a quick overview of what the machine can do in terms of the materials and the different projects you can do with the machine. But the Lumos also has a couple other tricks as well, namely in that you can add in a slide extension, which I think I wrongly called a conveyor before, but this is a slide extension and you can also add in a rotary. And you can even combine them together to do things like baseball bats or really long cylindrical items. So let's get a quick look at the slide extension and adding on the rotary. So quick note about the slide extension. This is a very well made piece of equipment here. It is all machined aluminum and it has this coating on it. I don't think it's truly anodized, but it's a nice durable coating and it has nice readable measurements all along here, which are important too when you set things up in the Make It software. So let me get this installed. There are a couple things needed in order to convert it to use this. And as I was setting this up, I realized just how well this thing is made. And with the way it attaches and screws on, it felt really solid. I didn't feel like anything was gonna move. It felt pretty dependable on what it was doing and adding in that extra length into the machine. Now it isn't perfect. It still kind of limits your dimensions in one direction, but you could add in longer pieces or multiple pieces and set things up in that fashion. So it could speed up your production. It could simplify things. Definitely a welcoming addition to the capabilities of the machine. And as far as the test goes, I just did a, a simple test of this one kind of collection of creatures over and over again as it slides across if I was going to do a whole batch of these for whatever reason, it'd be kind of nice to engrave these all at once and I can run a separate pass to cut each one out and set up kind of like a mini production line, which I think is part of the intention with the slide extension, but I think it's kind of up to the user to kind of figure out how they want to use it and how creative they could be to help them better create and more quickly create their projects. If you've seen any other of uh, WeCreate's recent products, you probably have seen the Rotary Pro that has these additional rubber blocks on the end here that adds a little bit more gripping power for when you're doing tumblers. So there isn't a whole lot revolutionary about the rotary in and of itself, although it does have a slightly different profile for this machine compared to how it fits into the 45 watt Pro and the other versions of the WeCreate Visions, which also means you can pretty much expect the same kind of quality and setup as the other machines. There is one other difference though, and I wish this would have been integrated into their other versions of the rotary, and that is this tilts. And depending on what is you're engraving and how you're engraving on that cylindrical object, this feature is extremely helpful. I don't know why it wasn't built into the other versions of the rotary pro, um, but I'm glad it's part of this one. And the rotary did exactly as expected. Now the one test that I did was really meant for a longer cylindrical object, not a typical tumbler, 
which is why it probably took a little bit longer than it actually should have. But the result came out really good, which is what I would expect. This is such a standard and ubiquitous object at this point, I would be extremely disappointed for any laser that couldn't handle this. But the Lumos did great, and I could probably optimize the settings even more for it to be uh, quicker and have just as good of a result. So this is, and by the way, this is a test tumbler that I use over and over again, which is why there's lots of other examples on here. But the bottom one of my logo is the one that I ran on the Lumos. So. so let's go ahead and start wrapping things up. I'll give you some final thoughts and hopefully help you decide whether or not this is worth looking into for you. Let's go ahead and tie this thing up into a nice little bow. The WeCreate Lumos is a great little machine. It's a great starter laser if you have not used one before, and it would be a great companion if you already have a, another laser in the shop but are looking for a little bit more expandability or something specifically to run smaller projects and or be portable. I didn't really model any of the portability in this video, but I will in another short video coming up for something that I want to use it for, and you'll get to see some of it there. I have a lot of other videos in the back catalog. A lot of them are laser related, but I have a lot of other DIY stuff too that I'm going to be getting back to very soon. If you are interested in picking up the Lumos, check the description below. I will have some further details about sales, codes, and all sorts of fun stuff. Just know that if you click on any of those links, some of them may be affiliate links and could possibly benefit the channel if you buy something through that, that link. If you did as far in the video, I want to say thank you. Your support in your eyeballs are very much appreciated and I do have more content coming soon. This is the last official laser review that I have planned, although I do have other related content and laser projects coming up that I'll be showing off with various machines, including the Lumos here. So if you have specific questions about the machine, anything additional that you'd like to know that I didn't cover in the video, please let me know in the comments below. And you can check us out on Patreon if you have some more direct questions that you'd like to ask and also take a look at some of the files that we have available uh, primarily for uh, laser work. So go and check that out at patreon.com geekbuilders. In the meantime, don't forget to design, make, and play. I'll see you in the next video.